Okay, hi everybody, my name is Madison. So this right here that I'm mixing is called Sugar Dine. It is sugar, just like plain white cane sugar and iodine. And so I mixed it together. I don't know if my, I don't know the exact ratio, but this is the consistency you want. And I've been using it on the donkey's abscesses. So I put it on it and then I wrap their foot with vet wrap and then ace bandage. I've also used it on a couple of horses' wounds and it seems to work. I like it, I've known about it forever. It's, we looked up the history of it, it goes way back, so it's, tried and true. But even the, um, as far back as the Greeks and the Egyptians used mixtures like this um, of some, either they mostly used like honey, which I've used honey a lot too. I love using it on wounds. This type of wound care goes way back. Hi, I'm Walker Grenolds. I'm the farrier out here at All Seed in the Barn, and today we are working on a draft mule named Layla. Pretty simple, just trimmer. We just trimmer about every six to eight weeks. I can't remember the last time, but and she's pretty good, just stand at her head, scratch on her, and she's pretty happy. The donkeys, they get caught for us, and we had four to do today. We had Doris, Ingrid, Jude, and Thelma, and they were all pretty easy. Just go out there with one of the guys to give us a hand, and we just trim them. Some of the donkeys had some fly boots on, and those donkeys, they're just more sensitive to the flies, and it'll irritate their legs. The flies are biting their legs, and then sometimes the donkeys will end up trying to scratch it and chew on their legs a little bit, and then it just becomes a big sore, so we'll put the fly boots on those ones, or I say we will, Madison or somebody else will. Just get that taken care of, and if we can keep the flies off their legs to keep them from laying eggs in their leg, it'll heal a lot quicker. Today we were, we're also working on Ziggy, and Ziggy's a big draft baby, and he kind of acts like a baby, so we have to get a little help with sedation, and after it's sedated, then we're able to trim it, because there's a lot of cleaning up from the top, so we'll do a lot of rasping from the top and dressing it, just trying to get all the flare out. And then once we get all the flare out, we just clean up the frogs and trim it, and pretty simple. Good morning, I'm Dr. Lucas here at All Seated in a Barn. We just performed a physical on a new horse they got in. Healthy, good to go. He is missing an eye, but he's compensating for it very well. He did have bad teeth, so we did a dental on him, vaccinated him, and he's gonna be great. Good morning, everyone. It's Tiffany with All Seated in a Barn. Today, me and Desiree are going to do a group lesson together. So we're both going to get on a horse and then we are going to teach each other and show each other new things. So we're really excited to work together and work with our horses. Today, we're going to use Patrick and Presley, which are both available for adoption. Well, hello, good morning. We are getting ready here at All Seated in a Barn to have our amazing gala this Saturday the 26th. And in the meantime, the work must be done. I am planting plants. We make sure that this place is totally perfection when we have an event out here. So I would like to invite you all to give All Seated in a Barn a call for any of your holiday events, birthday parties, baby showers, birthdays. It's a beautiful place. We like to live the magic here at All Seated in a Barn. Have a great rest of your day. Hi everybody, it's Maddie at All Seed in the Barn. Uh, it's Wednesday, so we have Path Point again today. We actually have another friend with us named Bree who is helping out today as well. Today we've had Path Point do some cobweb removal for us. We're trying to get everything beautiful for our party this weekend. They helped us move some stuff around and we've actually taken out a lot of horses today to get some exercise, so that was a lot of fun for everybody. And even the goats, yes, the goats got out uh, on purpose and sometimes not on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> so we have, you know, a lot of our Pathpoint group come in and they do a lot of cleaning and taking care of animals. And so we were kind of talking to them about does that go at home too with you guys? And we've had a lot of them say that, yeah, their responsibilities are now taking care of their animals at home, helping with chores around the house with their parents or family members. And they are just growing bigger, you know, the more they come here, the more they are doing at home to help. So the the more they learn here, the more they take home with them and they're willing to do more work and help out. 
One of the most important things about riding, you always want to check your tack before you get on. So me and Desiree set up a whole new saddle, which for anyone that has set up a saddle before, you know it takes time and patience. So we just got done setting up a second saddle, and now we are going to have our group session together. I'm with Patrick here, who is our one-eye, very athletic horse. Um, so with one-eyed horses, your body movement is a little bit different because they only have one side to see you on. Um, so I'm being very um, consistent with my cues so that Patrick catches on to what I'm doing and we're having a great session so far. All right, so what I want to happen now is I'm gonna go back to the center of the round pen and Patrick's gonna follow me. When I get there, I'm gonna pet him to let him know that he did exactly what I wanted, which was follow me, his leader. Give him a pet and then I'm gonna ask him to move out. So I'm gonna put my left hand up and cluck to send him out. That left hand being up blocks him from coming closer to me and sends him out towards the rail, which you just saw. Now I'm going to point and cluck. That'll bring him into a trot. And so, of course, this is his good side because he could keep his eye on me at all times, his inside eye. However, he can't see what is to the outside of him, so he has to trust me. I control his speed with my cluck. I wanna speed him up, so I cluck. And what he just did there was he stopped to get a cue from me. And I just told him I kept my cue consistent to be say, go out and trot. And so we like when a horse stops and turns into us because that means that their focus and attention is on us. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop him and change direction. Oh. Beautiful, Patrick. And so I waved my left hand a little more dramatically than I would with a horse with two eyes because I wanted him to catch what I was doing. I wanted him to know that I was blocking off his forward movement and asking him to change directions. And so now he can't see me, he can only see the outside of the round pen. And so he's just listening to my voice. You're good, buddy. And so that was a lot for him as you saw him jump because he can't see on this side. So he's waiting for me on my, on my voice cues for what to do next. So now I'm gonna ask him to walk. Walk, 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 good oh boy. So he turned in, which I didn't want, I just wanted to walk, but I'm just starting my sessions with Patrick, so we're just learning each other. And so he came in, which is not what I wanted, but I didn't reprimand him, I just sent him out so that we could practice on changing transitions and speeds with voice control. And that'll really help a horse with one eye because then they know that they can trust the leader's voice. And so I love when he turns into me to check to see what I want him to do. And then he licks and chews when I send him forward, which tells me that he understands what I'm asking. Oh, good boy, Patrick, good boy. And so that, was a great example of him listening to my voice without being able to see me. He listened to my woe and turned in, and that was exactly what I wanted. Now I'm gonna send him out one more time after I uh, tighten the cinch for the last time. So now the same thing. I put my left hand up to block, and I send him out. Now I want him to lope, so I'm going to point and kiss. Good boy. And so a cluck, means trot and a kiss means canter when I work with horses. And he's showing off as you can see. So we're gonna let him get his heart rate up and do some loping. So he broke down to a trot. I'm gonna ask him to canter again. And so I'm keeping him moving forward just by walking in a circle to keep the momentum. So I always round pen a horse when I get them, even if it's been here for six months, because I want it to connect with me and not feel like I'm forcing a ride upon them. And so as you can see, Patrick has been following me all throughout the round pen. And so that tells me that he's okay with our connection and our relationship. And now I'm going to get on his back and we're going to do everything that we did on the ground. I love one-eyed horses because they have to trust you so much more than a regular horse does. When you work with them, it has to be really consistent and gentle so that they feel safe enough to be in a space to learn. When they are not in a safe space, a horse cannot learn. 
because they're in flight mode. Horses are either in fight or flight mode. When you have them all worked up and they're not responding to you, we need to bring it down so that we can create that connection. You always want to check um, your bridle to make sure that it's fitted to your horse properly. We use our bridles for many horses here and so that's always going back to the tack. Make sure that your saddle is fitted correctly and also your bridle. A horse should always wait for you when you mount. You can hear him licking and chewing. And so now I'm going to ask him to move forward. I'm not gonna to touch my, my hands and touch his mouth. I'm just going to add a little bit of leg and say, walk on, walk on. So from what Leanne was telling me, you guys want a trail horse that you guys can take out and just jump on and ride something that's safe and reliable. Right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah, but uh, we're not like uh, afraid of like putting work in. Okay, so you guys do have like, horse experience? Yeah, and like... So you're gonna find it, something huh? really yeah, special. Yeah, I know we will. There's no rush in the process. Awesome. And then the ones that we adopted two years ago, like, you know, they've been work and one we thought would be more for riding, but he's too old. Gotcha. So he's just living with us until... Gotcha, gotcha. I'm not afraid of like doing groundwork. Yeah, yeah, totally. That kind of stuff, building trust and cool. stuff. Cool. Ultimately, yeah, we'd love a horse that we can get on and ride around. Yeah, with. awesome. Um, so in my lineup right now, I have an amazing horse. So I have two that are really reliable for me. One is the horse behind you, Presley. Um, I have been using her to do lessons with Desiree, and so she is really good um, where you can try different things on the horse and she's not upset for you trying different things. And so that for me is a, a, a huge cue when I look for a horse because I want to be able to grow together. And so is the horse willing to learn or not willing to learn? And is it, o is it okay with me making mistakes or is it not okay with me making mistakes? On a super athletic horse, he's gonna be less forgiving of a mistake than she is, right? And so I really like her because we've used her for kids and we've used her for adults and she's been even the whole time, not, not bothered. Another one, which is my personal favorite, but I, she is getting rehab right now is Dash and she is my go-to girl like I'll jump on her bareback I you don't have to warm her up like she's an amazing horse and she is someone who once you partner with her she is magical and so her and I connect greatly I take her out every single day even though I'm rehabbing her because she loves that one-on-one -on -one connection and that time that said she is a mare which I love I love mares I will I'm a diehard mare girl. Um, she will bond with you incredibly, but you have to allow that time for that relationship to form. And so she's amazing horse, like walk, trot, canter. I take her everywhere, in the all the way out there where there's like scary machines, to the orchards over there, to that big fire flame that's at JP Oil. Like she is un unbothered by everything. That's amazing. And so I love, like, if I can afford a horse, I would have taken that horse for sure um, because she is reliable, she's trustworthy, she'll keep you safe, and she's super smart. And she's willing to learn and take you further. So I can do all of my like, shh, my like performance horse buttons on her and she's like, ah, I got it. And then she's like happy and shows it off. So yeah. she's like amazing, but she just needs time. Yeah. Um, that would be my, um, we do have Phantom who's back there, the beautiful piebald face horse. Yeah. However, he's always been um, a game horse. So when you get on him, he's ready to go because he, he was always a barrel racing horse or, you know, Jim Connor horse. So he, even though he's 18 years old, I'm telling you, he has the energy of a 10 year old. He's like, just let me go and I'm gonna win. I'm like, but there's no barrels to turn. <laughs> So he, if you're willing to work with some, work with a horse, like Leanne was, because Leanne had said, I recommended Phantom. I'm like, he's, he has a lot of go still though. I need more time with him. She's like, really? He looks really calm with you. I'm like, because I'm his person and I spent two months creating that, right? And so if you are willing to spend time and create, he will give you what you want but you have to put in time yeah. for him. This is Patrick here. We've taken him on the trails and he'll go around the cows and he's fine on the trails. You just have to know how to ride. And so this is not your go around the property. I don't have to worry about you. I'm not saying that he's dangerous by any means, but he would be an advanced riding horse. And he's so good. Honestly, you could probably win shows with him. Like he, know, he knows all of the performance buttons. Yeah. Our, our interest, so like where we're at is like 14 acres on this property. We're, uh -huh. we're with a nonprofit rehabbing the land. We do outdoor. Oh, awesome. We'll be camping and other community events. So we ride around out there, but th we, there's no fences. And cool. It's kind of an always changing landscape. And um, I feel like 
ultimately like we have no desire for showing or anything right else. right right i got to it's just part of like yes soul yes to be around the horse yes just cruise around so they have a lot of room to run and stuff we do a lot of outdoor education and community events like that's really cool and, yeah we use the horses as an opportunity for kids. that's awesome yeah. that is really cool um dash my favorite that i told you guys we've had field trips and there will be a hundred kids and she's like She's yeah. calm as a cucumber. They don't bother her at all. This one's Dash? No, that one's Presley. Um, I can take you to go walk by Dash. Yeah, no, it's okay. I'll walk with you guys. The best way to support us is always through donations, whether that be product that we need or monetary. And you can do that by joining our Patreon, going to the website, or visiting any of our social media platforms for links on the best ways to help us.